Hey guys, so today uh, we're looking at Dante Controller and we're just going to go through how we can use Dante Controller itself to monitor our network with uh, what resources we have. So looking at Controller right now, we're looking at a live show, um, has 40 devices currently and you can see there's plenty of subscriptions made and um, we're currently green on our clock status and I actually left some event logs from earlier um, the past week to see you know, something that is normal and nothing to be concerned about, but at least you know what you're looking at um, via your network, you know, to monitor. So the main primary thing on this page and um, any page of Dante Controller is actually our primary leader clock. And that is the first thing I would say that we need to look at to uh, monitor our network and know, hey, it's something, everything's good or there's, there's an issue. So um, to start off, we'll go to our clock status here. And in clock status, you'll notice that we have elected a device here to be preferred leader and it is synced to an external clock. Um, but the most important thing is that it is uh, the, the leader that we want right now and is called video one. And you'll see up here that that is in fact, primary leader clock video one. So the way that Dante works is that it goes through an election process to see who is the best leader, um, primarily based on Mac address um, along with the type of chipset that it is. But if you just go over here and you tell it, hey, I want this one to be the preferred leader, then all that election process goes away as long as that guy is on the network and as long as um, our PTP traffic is making it across to all of our devices. And what we'll notice is that if something is wrong, you'll get multiple devices here instead of just video one. There'll actually be a comma, next device, next device, next device, and it could mean um, a number of things. Uh, primarily what it means is that the PTP timing is not getting to those devices. So they've decided that they need to be a leader because they don't know who is, and so they elected themselves. And um, one thing that I would look at if that's happening is to see if those devices are um, situated on one specific switch, or if they're grouped together in any way, or if they're all separated. And if they're grouped together, it probably means it's configuration in that one switch. If they're all over the place, then I would look at the network as a whole and kind of um, start from my backbone switch and go from there if you have a star configuration. Um, it can get quite intense if, you know, your network is complex, but for the most part, it's usually pretty simple. Um, the biggest thing that you'll see being an issue is IGMP snooping, and that means that the multicast packets with the PTP are just, they're, they're being snooped and um, being declined by the switch because somebody hasn't requested that uh, multicast group address yet. That's a little deeper, um, but you can definitely do some research on that. But what you want is the primary leader clock to have just one, and it should be quick, it should be simple, it shouldn't be searching forever. Um, so that's the main thing. Um, so on this page, since we're on it, um, you can see your sync going all the way down, and those that's the, all the PTP timing. So that PTP timing is very important, as I said. If there is, for some reason, uh, one of them not synced, you, that'll be because that packet didn't get there in time, and then that's when you start having issues. So green is good. Um, the other thing that we can see here is, once again, our preferred leaders. And to enable the external clock, if you're connecting to a system for broadcast or something where you need to pass to video and so on and so forth. Um, the, now, the last thing, well, before we get more in depth on the network side, is I wanna go into our event log and our uh, clock status monitor. So like I said, I did keep this uh, little event log that came up. And the reason for this is I wanna show you that this is all good. There's not, this doesn't mean that it's bad. And in the event log, sometimes people freak out. So you just wanna remember, hey, you should probably look at it, see what it's really saying before you freak out. This is saying that this device <clears throat> um, went, is unlocked and then it locked and then it synced. So then the audio unmuted. So it starts off audio mute because it's looking for its master or its leader. Uh, then it says, oh, hey, it's uh, it's, un it's unlocked. I don't see my leader. Oh, no, I do see my leader. Okay, all right, we can unmute audio. That is a normal operation, and the way I know that's normal is because that took six seconds, so that is literally the device booting up. This device lost power. It came back on, and this is the event log that you get. This tells me that, all right, we lost power. If that was during recording, that would obviously be an issue, but in this case, it was, um, you know, we knew this was happening, so that's why I'm keeping that here. And the reason why a lot of people will freak out is if I go to my clock status monitor and we look at the log up here, you'll see that it's red and then green. That's just saying that, hey, it's turning on, all right, it's good to go. 
So this will be a very good place for you to monitor your network and see if there's anything happening. Um, just like up here, if you saw multiple primary leader clocks, you'd actually see it in your event log and it'll say elevated to leader, elevated to leader for all these different devices. And that's actually another way to see what time did it happen, um, you know, what day, what devices was it on. That These are all ways that if it all gets cleared up, but you have these event logs, at least you can see what happened and get an idea. So the elevation to leader is what you would be looking for there. Um, and while we're on this tab, you have this history. And this history is a histogram, um, uh, essentially, of packets and the, the clock getting there in time. So you don't want to be too far off, but you can be anywhere within this range for Dante, and the devices will be just fine. The main thing we want to look at are these um, two, two lines here. So with these two lines, um, what it's basically saying is that the, the clock itself, the P2P timing, it got, you know, it shifted a little bit over time, but we have over, I believe that's a million packets there that are almost, uh, we have over 100,000, almost a million packets here that are obviously on one side and then it shifted just a little bit. So this shows me on my network that there is not a lot of jitter. And what jitter is, is packets being sent out of the trunk links going to another device and so on and so forth so that they can get back to the to the leader clock and the leader clock can also send back to him and say, okay, well, here's your timing, here's your timing, here's your timing. Well, what this is saying is there's not a lot of jitter and those packets are being consistent on time versus, well, it might get there 300 microseconds, then 800 microseconds, then 400 microseconds, and that's where you start seeing a lot of spikes. What we want is this, not a lot of spikes. If you're getting a lot of spikes, we may have to set the prioritizing for those PTP timing packets to get there. Something you can look into. Um, that's DSCP uh, settings for quality of service. They're on managed switches, and it's something that you may have to do in a bigger system. Um, and it's not really even recommended for a system of this size per se. Usually, it's start when you start getting to like 80 to 100 devices, but it's not bad practice to do. So that's something to look at. We'll just go through a couple of devices, and you'll see it's all good. Um, one thing I do want to show you guys, and I know this video is taking some time, but uh, this is a this is a device that constantly gets um, turned on and off. So there is a little bit of jitter with that. It doesn't always remember all of its data, but as it connects to the network, you'll see that there's usually a few spikes in the beginning and then it cleans itself up because it's just getting connected and turned on. And I really want to show you Dante Virtual Sound Card. And I think there's a lot of mystery behind this of why it's not always so reliable, but these are Dante Virtual Sound Card devices. And you'll see that it's pretty far off and it's um, got some spikes and we'll go down through them. And this one has a ton of spikes. This one has some spikes and that one has some spikes and they're a little off. And so what's actually happening here is the packets are being sent and they are getting there in time, but there's some jitter because the, the computer itself that Dante Virtual Sound Card is running on is a multitasking computer, of course. So there's processes in the background. It could be Google Chrome that's open. It could be YouTube. It could be you're exporting a file. There's anything they could be doing on your computer is CPU intensive. And the CPU is not prioritizing your sound card audio first out over everything. It doesn't care if it's five milliseconds late or three milliseconds or one millisecond. It just needs to be within the 10 milliseconds that um, DVS actually provides you with. And I'll t take a look at that with you guys in a minute here. But um, that's why DVS, when you have a bigger network and, um, you know, you have a lot of traffic going on, the PTP is very important. Well, DVS with a lot of channels might be a little jittery. It might not be as consistent. And that's why Dante gives you actually a longer latency time for that because they know the CPU is working and it's not going to prioritize those, prioritize those packets. So sometimes you might even see um, some lost packets going to DVS because of that reason. Um, I'll show you where you can see that in a minute here. But, uh, but yeah, so that's one thing I wanted to point out. Before we get into individual devices on a detail level, I wanna show you guys one last tab that is really good for networking, which is obviously network status. Just to explain this real quick, here's all of our devices on the left. Um, subscription status means it's all good for all of the subscriptions that have been made to that device on the receiving end. And the primary status is your uh, link bandwidth. So that is saying that all these devices are connected to a one giga port, one giga, Bit, uh, port on this switch and they are also a one gigabyte um, port uh, Dante chip. So there's some devices that are sometimes 100 megabit um, uh, have 100 megabit Dante chips and those ones would say 100 megabit because they are that is what they are but most are one gig so that says that. Um, now the important section here is your primary receive and transmit and uh, that's just showing you active uh, bandwidth on those on those two lines. So every port if it's one gigabyte port, it has one gigabyte going receive and one gigabyte going transmit. So it's 
these are totally two separate things. They don't combine together per device to say, this is how much uh, bandwidth I'm using for the entire port. It's set one gigabyte transmit, one gigabyte receive. Um, this console here, CL5 Red, has quite a bit of subscriptions made, I believe 53, and a lot of transmit and a lot of multicast. So, um, you know, there's a lot of channels going on. It's still incredibly small. And on that switch specifically, we have a few consoles. And if we were to add it up, it basically comes up to like 250 to 300 megabits per second. So we're not reaching near a gig and uh, we're feeling really comfortable with that. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is a great page to see in case anything were happening crazy. Little tidbit of information. Um, one Dante flow, unicast flow, is, has four channels of audio in it. And that is typically six megabits per second, depending on your, um, your bit depth and your... Uh, latency and some other things but the important thing is to understand it's six megabits per second for four channels of audio it's it's very low if you do multicast um, it's actually eight channels of audio and it's it's pretty relatively the same so um, that's how it can be very efficient but yeah you can see here that we have a bunch of devices and you get a good idea of what's going on last thing on this tab is the latency status and the latency settings um, the status itself uh, if you just hover over, you can see your peak latency. If it was orange, it means that it's getting close to your setting, which is one millisecond in this case. Or if it's red, then it means it passed one millisecond. I'll tell you the peak setting. We can see that in detail down the line, but uh, this is a great way to see all your devices and see real quick and any packet errors or packet loss. So now let's look at a device and see some subscriptions. This is the detailed view, and this is the last segment of this video. Um, what you would want to see first is... You can see status, which gives you an idea of your frequency offset, which was down here, that page right over here. Oh, and I'll show you, so this yellow, this is DBS, so I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but yeah, this is basically, here's your PPM, and your frequency offset of the leader clock. That is what this number was. Oh, let's open up that tab again. Right here, so this is just another way to look at um, you know, your, your specific device settings your clock synchronization and your transmit and receive utilization on the network. So there you go, you can see your IP address, all that good jazz, um, individually by the clock. But the important tab here is the latency tab. So you can see every single receive um, coming into this device, which is the CL5 Red, and you can see that specific subscription from that device is saying it's at one millisecond, it's got a peak of 354 microseconds and an average of 333, which is great. Jitter on your network, you're going to see the spikes all over the place here, and then you'll know, oh, this specific subscription, it's not the CL5, it could be the transmit from this specific device on whatever switch it is, or, you know, vice versa. This is a great way to look, and you can see the duration of the time that we've had that subscription active, any late packets, so on and so forth, and you can go through and see all your different subscriptions um, in here. So, you know, it's looking pretty good. It's okay to have a spike or two every once in a while. It's really not a big deal. It's when you get five or six that are bad uh, but look we got you know a lot of packets that we've been going through so we're looking good there um the thing last thing i want to show you that's really about it um the network config itself if we want to go through that real quick you can tell depending on the device it is um there's two different settings the current one is switched right now or you can do redundant redundant is when you use the secondary port on the dante chipset to be a redundant network or switched is you can daisy chain that's all it is uh, we keep everything daisy chain and we really do not do secondary uh, networks because then you need secondary switches, which is a lot of money and a lot of extra time and cable. So um, the second thing is the obtain an IP address automatically is a DHCP um, request or a client. So they'll, they're looking for DHCP right now. We have everything with a DHCP server. If you go manual, then you'll just do static and um, should do some research if you want to go that route. Um, now, where would I want to go from here? That pretty much is everything that we need to look at with the detail page. It's really the latency for a network that we were concerned about. The last thing is to get on a look at Dante uh, or DVS, Dante Control or um, Dante Virtual Sound Card. So DVS, if you don't know, is a sound card for your computer to get Dante audio anywhere on the network, and you can record with it. You can monitor so on and so forth. They're using this to record the show. So we have some backups. They're all the FDN booms. Um, they have backups. They have primaries. And you'll see that all of our devices on this network are set to one millisecond, except DVS, 10 milliseconds. If we look at the peak here, we have 8.4 milliseconds for one of the subscriptions at one point. That's because that CPU was working on something else and that was the peak there. That's why they give us this longer setting. So you can have 
Dante devices with different uh, latency settings. What this means is any device that is sending to the um, DVS machine is going to actually send it with an expectation to get there within 10 milliseconds, not one millisecond. That's how Dante works. If there is a device that has a longer latency setting, they take the longer one versus the shorter ones so that they are compatible with that device. That is how that works. If we go in here, we can actually take a look. Um, it's set to 10 milliseconds. And in this case, we cannot change it due to our setup. And when we go to latency, we'll see that DVS is all over the place because uh, that's DVS. So good to know, guys. This is why we're doing this. And here's our one packet that was a little late. So that was coming from the q one red. Good to know. See, everything coming in is at 10 milliseconds, even though the device itself, like the q one red, is set to one millisecond. So that is up. what's up with DVS. Um, I think that's really going to be it for us today. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment. And... Um, and uh, get your Dante certification. It'll explain a lot of this uh, in depth. Um, it's pretty cool stuff once you really get down to it. But it's definitely, you know, it's not magic or anything like that. Once you know what's going on, uh, you can definitely fix your network. Um, the last thing I would recommend is when you have a big system or bigger system, and for your devices is, I would say, small to medium, if anything. But the bigger the system, you want to configure your switches. And the primary thing is IGMP snooping for multicast and your querier to properly um, associate yourself with that multicast group and um, getting your DSCP values correct, which is prioritizing the PTP packets and the audio packets properly so that they get pushed out of the switch first over anything else on that switch because control data can always be longer. We don't care about control data, but PTP has to get there within the specific set time. So those two are definitely the most important things um, and yeah, if you need to, if you're for some reason have long latency, a multiple hop, something like that, um, then you can raise these latencies to five milliseconds, up to five milliseconds if you need to. Um, if you need to go more than that, then you can buy Dante Domain Manager, which is a whole separate video. So thank you guys. Uh, hope that answered some questions for you.